Hello everyone and welcome to a, a really wild game from round 10 of the 2018 Batumi Chess Olympiad. Uh, the match is uh, China versus Poland and on board one we have Liren Ding uh, of China versus uh, Jan Schist of Duda. Uh, now we already mentioned that uh, Duda had some incredible encounters uh, in the four previous matches. He's playing board one for Poland uh, and uh, they are playing uh, excellently. So uh, <laughs> we already mentioned he defeated Vasily Vanchuk and then uh, three games in a row he drew against Shahrir Mamedyarov, then he drew against Levon Aronian, and then he drew uh, in the previous round against the World Chess Championship challenger Fabiano Caruana. Now he faces uh, yet another member of the 2800 club, it's Liren Ding, and uh, it really uh, is a very impressive game. But we f before we go to the game, uh, I don't know how many of you are actually following what goes on in FIDE. FIDE has a new president. Uh, the new president of FIDE is Arkady Dvorkovic. Uh, there you have it, it's this gentleman. Uh, a very nice photo by David Lada. Now, uh, uh, Arkady Dvorkovic was a member uh, of the organization committee for the 2018 uh, FIFA World Cup in Russia. Uh, so definitely a, a competent man and uh, I'm very eager to see what uh, changes uh, might occur in FIDE. Uh, I wouldn't go so far as to, uh, you know, that Nejmedina will actually be given a Grandmaster title, but, you know, uh, a step by step, perhaps we'll get there. And uh, also here we have a very nice photo uh, of Nigel Short uh, shaking Vladimir Kramnik's hand. Uh, as you know, uh, Nigel Short was also uh, in the race uh, for the FIDE presidency, but uh, he backed out in the last moment. Uh, and then right after the elections, he announced that, that he is now the new FIDE vice president. So there you have it, a bit of news uh, from FIDE. Now let's check out this very nice game. Uh, uh, Liren opens with d4. We have knight to f6, c4, e6, knight to f3. Uh, let me just fix that. Uh, and of course we transpose into the queen's gambit declined with the d5. Knight to c3, we have d captures on c5 and now e4. Uh, a very sharp line. Uh, b5, uh, this is one of the few lines of the queen's gambit uh, where it is actually okay to defend the c4 pawn. Uh, we have e5, knight to d5 and now knight captures on b5. Uh, we have knight to b6 and bishop to e2. And it's very interesting, this game follows uh, a game that was played uh, in the Singfield Cup between Mamedyarov and Caruana, but it also follows a game that was already played by Duda with the black pieces. Uh, he played it against Radoslav Wojtaszek uh, in the Poland champ uh, Polish Championship in 2018. Uh, we have knight to c6, uh, castles and now bishop to e7. And uh, this is the moment where uh, Caruana played, um, uh, Mamidarov played bishop to e3 against Caruana and also uh, uh, Wojtaszek played bishop to e3 against Duda. Uh, so uh, he here is the moment where Ding goes uh, queen to d2 and now we have a completely new game uh, that was never played before. The this position is not available in the database. Uh, so definitely a nice home preparation by, uh, by Duda, uh, sorry, <laughs> by Ding. Uh, we have castles, uh, and now comes queen to f4. The difference between these, uh, this game and uh, the game Wojtaszek Duda is that in that game this bishop was uh, developed to e3, then bishop was played to g5, then the bishops got exchanged, and only then did the queen come to f4. Here uh, Ding has uh, different plans for this bishop on c1. Uh, rook to b8, and now knight back to c3, not allowing the knight on b5 to stay a target. Uh, and now e5. e5 a very nice move. Uh, controlling d4 square, not allowing ideas like knight to e4, but also uh, 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 pretty much inviting uh, this uh, ampassant capture on f6. Uh, because now after rook captures, you attack the queen, queen has to move, and now knight to b4 uh, will be will be very annoying, and black would, black would be uh, doing great here, perhaps even knight to d3, uh, with an idea of giving up the doubled, c pawn, the, the doubled pawn uh, for the bishop pair would also be an idea. Uh, so after f5, uh, queen to g3 by Ding. And it's very interesting, um, uh, Ding really spent only a few seconds uh, for every move. Uh, here we have king to h8, a very important move because uh, whatever your plan uh, is, this bishop to h6 will always be a possibility. Uh, for example, if you go for this sort of free pawn with knight captures on d4, uh, then knight captures on d4. Queen captures and now comes bishop to h6. And there's really nothing to play here, the threat is queen to g7. Checkmate, uh, you can't block with the rook, uh, uh, y y you'd have to play g6 and allow bishop captures rook because now bishop to h5 is an idea and now g6 doesn't work because of uh, the simple bishop captures h captures queen captures uh, and now it's all over uh, 
there's really nothing to play here. King goes here, queen captures, uh, uh, white is totally, completely winning here. Uh, so after queen to g3, first Duda goes for king to h8. Uh, rook to d1, now defending the d4 pawn, and now we have knight to b4. Uh, with ideas of this knight coming to c2 or perhaps even d3. And here we have b3 by Ding, and this is in fact the strongest move. Now uh, ideas like knight to d3 are pretty much pointless, simply b captures on c4, and this knight is just silly here. Knight captures on c1, yes you do grab a bishop, but then after rook captures on c1, uh, you have this monster center where d5, uh, when it comes it will really hurt. Uh, so after b3, simply c captures on b3, and now a captures on b3, a semi-open file for Ding's rook, uh, and the a7 pawn is under attack, you do have to do something about this. Uh, we have a6, sometimes you just have to defend the pawn, uh, and here comes bishop to c4, a very nice move, uh, where again, Ding is inviting this capture on c4, because again, uh, the, the end result would be this uh, monster pawn formation in the center. So after bishop to c4, we have knight to c2 with an attack on the rook, uh, and here Ding plays uh, rook to a2. Knight back to b4 by Duda, rook to a1, and the knight to d2. With this move, uh, Duda uh, is pretty much offering a draw. Uh, if uh, Ding is uh, willing to repeat moves, then we will have a draw by repetition. Uh, rook to a2, and again knight to b4. And now if uh, Ding repeats rook to a1 one more time, uh, it will indeed be uh, draw by a threefold repetition. So here Ding really sp uh, took his time, uh, and he calculates uh, a very nice idea. He plays rook to e2. Uh, we have a5, and now comes d5. A very nice idea. Uh, you don't just push a pawn like this in the center if you don't, if you don't have something to back it up. So what's the idea? Uh, we have e captures on d5 by Duda, this is definitely alright, and now e6. Very interesting, okay, it's a very nice pa pass pawn on e6, the bishop cannot be captured for the moment, as the pawn is pinned, the queen, this rook is very nicely x-raying the queen. So what do you do here? The best idea and the best defensive resource for black here, it seems to be rook to f6. Uh, simply with a double attack against the e6 pawn. And now after knight to g5, uh, defending the pawn, now king to g8. You don't want to allow knight to f7 to come with check picking up the queen, or you would have to give up the rook, uh, but doesn't really matter. Uh, but now after knight to f7, you have queen to f8. Now getting the queen out of the way, the pawn is no longer pinned, so now pawn captures bishop is definitely uh, an idea. And after the bishop moves, now you capture the pawn, rook captures on e6, and black is better here. So it seems uh, uh, Duda did not uh, continue uh, in the best way possible, uh, rather he had a different idea. He played bishop to d6, okay, it comes with an attack on the queen, uh, and also now the rook is no longer x-raying the queen, pawn captures bishop is a possibility now. So what was Ding's idea here? Queen to h3, and okay, you already see that some knight to g5, queen h7 business uh, is about to break here, uh, and d captures on c4 is, is a bit too soon, because here, uh, as we've mentioned, knight to g5, uh, and after h6, knight to f7 check. Rook captures, pawn captures, and now uh, there, is no, there is no defense against uh, rook to d8. If you try to block it with something like bishop to d7, uh, or, or simply blocking it with bishop to f8, then bishop captures on h6 is coming, and uh, black is completely busted. There's there's no defense here. Uh, bishop to g5 will be checkmate as the pawn is covering the g8 square. And of course, if you capture, then simply queen captures will be checkmate. Uh, okay, so after queen to h3, you can't capture the bishop just yet. So first queen to f6, the best defensive idea. And here it's really not all that clear how Dink can continue this attack. I mean, you kind of do have to continue this attack uh, as, you've, uh, as you've given a pawn, but uh, how do you continue it? And here, uh, Ding spent some 30-something minutes, and it's, it's really a very nice move. It's not even, uh, it's not even clear how, how such a thing is possible, but uh, here, uh, he actually doesn't uh, move his bishop, rather he plays knight to b5. And here, uh, it, it's it's not a moment where I want you to pause the vid uh, video and find something. It's just uh, you know try try to figure out uh, how is this compensation uh, for the for the bishop. Uh, I don't want you even to pause the video because uh, I mean Ding spent 30 minutes on it. If you're willing to spend 30 minutes on it, then uh, by all means do. But uh, you know I I don't think uh, it, it would be possible. Uh, so Duda accepts the bishop sacrifice. D captures on c4 four was played. Uh, knight captures on d6, we have c captures on d6, and now comes e7. 
And okay, your pass pawn is marching forward, rook to e8, blocking the pass pawn, uh, and here we have knight to g5, threatening checkmate. So if you look at the position now, you do have a pass pawn on e7, guarded by, uh, protected by the rook, uh, the other rook is very nicely placed on d1, you do have a knight on g5, queen on h3, already threatening checkmate, you, you do have to deal with this. So part of the compensation for the piece is that uh, these knights are very oddly placed. The rook isn't really doing all that much, and this bishop... For now, again, not 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 uh, too great of a piece. Perhaps after f4 will be played, then it might come alive. But for now, uh, the placement of uh, black's pieces is compensation in itself. Uh, so what do you do here? Uh, you cannot stop it with h6. If you try h6, then <laughs> you don't play rook to d6. It seems like a very nice idea. Queen captures, uh, and then knight to f7 picks up the queen with check. Uh, but here you have a problem, because now f4 attacks the queen, and now it's actually black that's winning uh, once you <laughs> move the queen. Uh, on the other hand, uh, after h6, like I said, you don't capture immediately, uh, but first you have this queen to h5. Now uh, all of these threats are possible, also now the queen is attacking the rook. And once you defend the rook, bishop to d7, only now do you get uh, rook captures here, and now there is no f4 uh, to attack white's queen on, uh, on h3, and now uh, you're simply lost. Either queen captures and the knight... Uh, f7 picks up the queen, uh, or if you don't do this, if you try and move the queen, let's say queen to e5, uh, then simply rook captures on h6. Pawn captures, queen captures, and it, it is all over now. King g8, queen to h7 will be checkmate. Uh, so, after knight g5, queen g6, the best defensive resource by Duda, preventing queen to h5. Uh, so, how do you proceed here? Well, there's no time for a slow move. Rook captures on d6, as planned. Uh, now, you don't have uh, time to capture it, because knight f7 wins the queen, so first f4, as planned. Uh, the queen is now under attack. Uh, Ding proceeds with queen to h4, uh, keeping all of his options open. The queen is still under attack, the same threat still applies if queen captures knight f7 check. Uh, so here we have queen to b1. And queen to b1 uh, seems, like, uh, seems like it guards everything. The threat is, of course, queen captures bishop, uh, but now it's not all that clear. Uh, rook, uh, queen captures on f4, guards the bishop and uh, threatens queen to f8. And uh, perhaps this would have been uh, uh, the best uh, idea for white. Uh, after bishop to d7, it's it's not all that easy to see how white proceeds here. Uh, but uh, Ding finds a different idea. He simply defends with rook to e1. The bishop is now guarded and here uh, the position is uh, holdable uh, or tenable, as someone <laughs> already mentioned in the comments. Uh, but... Um, uh, with a move like bishop to d7, you can still hold here, uh, as uh, the rook is guarded, uh, there's no there's no way to actually push for uh, for something here with white. But white's eternal, uh, black's eternal problem is um, that the, the position of his pieces is just weird. And this is something that is often a case in chess. It's much easier to attack than to defend. Uh, often when you attack, there will be that one move that helps you. But when you're defending, you have like this whole... Uh, variety of options and you have no idea which one is actually <laughs> the, the one that uh, will prevent you from losing the game. Uh, so here with bishop to d7, Duda could still uh, hold this position, uh, but he played bishop to f5 and bishop to f5 loses the game. Uh, how does bishop to f5 lose the game and bishop to d7 doesn't? Uh, feel free to pause the video here and try to find the winning move that Ding indeed played in this game. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds to decide whether you want to do it or not. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations. Uh, you have just uh, defeated a, a very strong player who we already said uh, beat Vasily Vanchuk and drew against uh, some, some of the top five chess players in the world. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, the idea is Rook to D8. And now it becomes obvious. If the bishop was on D7, Rook to D8 would not be a possibility. Uh, so what do you do here? Of course, you cannot capture the rook. If you capture knight to f7, wins immediately. Uh, the king is in check, you have to move, now knight captures. The threat is pawn to e8, this will uh, bring a queen, and it is all over. Uh, if you try to prevent this, it doesn't really matter. Uh, simply queen, and after you capture captures, it's checkmate, the knight is covering the f7 square. So after rook to d8, uh, Duda tried uh, bishop to g6, uh, but now we have uh, rook captures on b8. You do have to capture it, rook captures, and now comes queen captures on f4. Uh, everything is defended, there's really not all that much to do here, pawn to e8 is definitely a threat. 
Uh, so do the tried uh, pawn, uh, rook to g8. Rook to e8 doesn't help you either because then simply queen to f8, you give up the queen for a nice checkmate. Uh, so rook to g8 was played and now comes knight to f7 check. Pawn captures, queen captures. Again, you're, uh, you're dead lost here. If, if, if you play any move, then queen captures rook will be will be checkmate after king captures you simply bring another queen to deliver checkmate uh, so do the tried knight to d7 trying to bring uh, the knight over to f6 to help out with the defense uh, but it is much too late um, Duda would have probably given up already if it wasn't a team event but you do have to try uh, we have another queen on the board uh, and now knight to f6 it's very hard to imagine that white could actually blunder the game here. Uh, it would have to be something like queen captures, knight captures, and then uh, threatening checkmate where black would be allowed to play something like this and uh, deliver checkmate. Uh, but of course, Ding Liren uh, is not undefeated for over 80 games uh, for, <laughs> for uh, blundering uh, moves like this. Uh, here, simply bishop to g5 was played and now uh, on move 38. Uh, it was in this position that Jan Shistov Duda resigned the game. So there we have it. Uh, a very nice win. There's really nothing to do here. His queen is under attack. Uh, the threat is uh, you're going <laughs> to capture this knight and then deliver checkmate and pretty much whatever you play. Even you grab the queen, then rook captures queen. Uh, you are down a queen, simply losing. Uh, so yeah, after bishop to g5, uh, Duda resigned the game, and uh, yet another uh, game added to, uh, to Ding Liren's undefeated streak, uh, which is now, uh, I'm not sure, I, um, I think it's around 85 games, so still uh, not uh, uh, not close to Sergei uh, Tivyakov's uh, world record, uh, but you know, uh, <laughs> the way he's playing, uh, I think it's uh, over, it's been over a year now since uh, the last game he lost. Uh, but yeah, too bad for Jan Duda as he was having a, 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 an excellent tournament. But uh, you know, Ding Ding is really doing uh, incredible stuff here, and uh, I don't know. I, I can't even imagine how exciting uh, the next uh, candidate cycle will be. And uh, just so I don't forget, uh, these are the standings after round 10. So one more round to go in 2018 Batumi Chess Olympiad. Uh, United States and China in uh, first place, uh, followed by Poland, uh, France, Russia, India, Armenia, Ukraine, Germany, Czech Republic, England, Kazakhstan, Vietnam, uh, Croatia, Norway in 15th. Uh, Sweden, Moldova, Austria, Philippines, and Azerbaijan in 20, which is uh, pretty incredible as they were, uh, as they were, uh, you know, uh, sharing first place just a few rounds ago. Uh, but that's chess for you. Anything can happen. So there we have it. Uh, United States of America and China tomorrow are deciding the winner of the Olympiad. It will be uh, World Chess Championship challenger Fabiano Corwana against Ding Liren. So can can Fabiano do something about this uh, undefeated streak uh, Liren's been having for the past year, uh, or will it uh, uh, will it be a bit different? And it's very interesting. Nakamura did not play today. Uh, 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 Ray Robson uh, was a substitute for him and the United States won their today's match. So it will be very interesting if uh, Nakamura will be playing tomorrow against China. So there we have it. Uh, a little uh, a little coverage uh, of the 2018 Batumi Chess Olympiad. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it and that you have enjoyed this game. I certainly have. Uh, I would like to thank uh, David Rossi, uh, Karl Repinski, Ella Zamir, Timothy J. Buxton and uh, John Faroup for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, uh, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and uh, I'll see you soon uh, definitely with uh, a, a game or two from the last round of the Olympiad and uh, hopefully finally continuing the Bobby Fischer series. Thank you all and I'll see you soon.